In this video, we are going to see how we can send an email directly through SQL Server. Now, this can be a useful feature in case we want to send out email notifications for system alerts like the temporary space reaching a particular threshold or the transaction log being, let's say, 90% full and so on. So let's get started. To set up the database email configuration, we would be using the stored procedures provided under the system database MSDB. So step one is to create a database profile that will be used to send out the email notifications. So we are first going to execute the add profile system procedure, which is msdb.dbo.sysmail underscore add underscore profile underscore sp to which you need to pass on the parameter values. So the first parameter that we're going to pass is the profile name. So you can set any name. I'm just going to call it no star. And then the second parameter value that we are going to pass is for the description. So you can set your description for your mail uh, database mail profile. I'm just going to call it system notifications. So this is going to be the first part of setting up the profile. So I'm just going to execute this part. Now step two is to create or configure your mail account. So to do that, we are going to execute the add mail account short procedure again, which is going to be from the MSDB database. So, and it's called the sysmail underscore ed underscore account underscore sp. Now, so I'm going to set up my Gmail account. I'm just going to map my Gmail account and then add it to the profile that we just created. So the first parameter that we have to pass is the account name. Again, you can keep any name. So I'm just going to say SQL email account. Now the second parameter is the email address. I'm going to be adding my Gmail address. If it is an organization, you would be adding your organizational address. So I'm just going to say learn.nostar at gmail.com. Next, you need to provide the mail server. So for Gmail, it is smtp.gmail.com. Next is going to be your port number and the enable SSL. So your email admin and your database admin can provide all these details. And then you have to provide your username, which is going to be learn.noster and your password. So your email password. So I'm just going to, so whatever is your email password. So you can just execute this part and uh, your mail account will be set up as well. Now, step three is to add the email account to your profile. So the profile that we just created. Now, again, we are going to use another MSDB procedure. This is called add profile account underscore SP. So the first parameter that we pass to this is the profile name. So the and the next parameter is going to be your account name. Next, you have to add another parameter, which is the sequence number. So the sequence number will basically determine uh, for any new mail, which database mail account to use. So the one with the lowest sequence number will be used. So if you put it as one, that is supposed to be the lowest, and then this mail account will be used. And now we can execute this part, and the profile is now set up. Now, the next step is to grant an access to the database profile that we created to a particular database user or a role. You can have private access as well as public access. So private access, you can have for particular specific users and roles, or you can just give the public access. So for our example, we're just going to grant the public access for now so that we don't need to go into the details of a user and a role. So to do that, we're going to execute another stored procedure, which is called the sysmail at principal profile underscore SP. Now you need to pass some parameters. The first one is going to be the profile name. So I just copied it from here, which is the no star. The next parameter is called principal ID. And if you pass a zero value to this, then it is going to make it a public profile. So public access. So we are just going to leave it at zero. If in case of private profiles, you can restrict it to a particular user or role. And we need to pass one more parameter, which is called add is underscore default. And we're going to set it to one, which simply means that we have declared it as the default profile for sending the emails. Again, I'm going to execute this part and this all executed fine. 
Now, all these steps that we completed using stored procedures to create a database mail account can also be done through your SSMS. So you can have a database mail configuration feature and you can do it through the GUI as well. Now, once we have created the profile, we actually need to enable the database mail functionality in SQL Server. Now, to enable the database email, we need to make a call to another system stored procedure, which is sp underscore configure. And we need to set the show advanced options to one because the database mail functionality is an advanced option. Now, we reconfigure go. And we call the SP configure procedure again. And this time we set the database mail XPs to one and then we reconfigure. Now this is a part of the master database. So we are going to use the master database over here. So we're just going to say use master go. And because these uh, stored procedures, SP configure stored procedure is part of the master database. Now so what we have done over here is first we have configured the advanced options and then we have configured or set the database mail functionality and reconfigured to install the database mail functionality on our server. So we're just going to execute this part and you will get your messages that the advanced options was changed from 0 to 1 and the database mail XPs was also changed from 0 to 1. So now we are done with all the configurations and all the settings. And now the next and the last step is to send the email. For that, again, we are going to use the MSDB stored procedure. So we are just going to say execute msdb.tbo.spsenddb mail. So the first parameter is the profile name, which you will be using to send the email. So I've just copied it from the above uh, settings and it is going to be no star. That is the name we gave to our profile. Next, we are going to define the recipient's email address. And then we have to pass our body of the message, which can be anything. Let's just say testing for now. And the next one is going to be the subject which we can say as test system notification. So we are just testing this out that our configuration has been properly set up and we actually go and receive this email. So I'm just going to run this stored procedure with the parameters that we just created and you will see that mail ID equal to one is queued. And this is the mail notification that you will receive. You can also configure your SQL code to execute a SQL query and then send the results of that query as part of the email notification. Now, there's some additional steps that need to be performed. If you're using the gmail.com as your sender ID in the SQL application, you need to generate an app specific password and all the detailed steps for performing and operating that password are listed in the description below. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, then please do not forget to subscribe to your YouTube channel and like, comment and share this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Goodbye.